Hey y'all, I'm Pam with 44 Marketplace. And if today's your first visit to my channel, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm glad you're here. Please take a minute to subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. And keep in mind, I try to put a material list in the comments below each one of the videos. If I miss something, please let me know. Okay, let's get started. Um, tonight, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about uh, color washing bricks. I know this kinda has a little bit of an echo, but um, we have a great fireplace here that we are going to color wash. Um, this is what I'm working on tonight, and I wanted to share it with you guys. If you follow me, you know that I just did a two-story um, fireplace surround that turned out really well we did it we changed it from black um, to drop cloth with some glaze with some custom glaze and she already has it decorated for christmas um, i'm going to be putting pictures up of that very shortly she's going to get me a picture of that and i want you to see this fireplace before we get started so here we go i'm going to tilt you up so you guys can see it is almost as tall as the fireplace i just worked on so this is gonna be awesome. And I know a lot of people have questions about working with bricks. Um, these are the red bricks, as you can see. And sometimes you have a little bit of a hiccup when you're working with red bricks because of the deep red undertone. So what we're gonna talk about tonight is color washing bricks is kind of, um, you don't want them to look painted. You want them to look color washed. And if you know me, I do some furniture, but I do a lot of kitchens and I do odd things, grandfather clocks, fireplaces, accessories, things like that. This is one of the questions that I get a lot of times is about color washing bricks um, because I don't really want them to look painted. Every once in a while, I'll do a German smear on them or something like that, but this one we're gonna color wash. As you can see, they have very neutral walls. I'm gonna turn it so you can see we've got neutral walls here. They're kind of um, just a nice off-white creamy kind of color. So what we want to do is make these bricks not be so red. Now, when you're color washing red bricks, what you've got to remember is you need to use a gray undertone just to kind of neutralize it. Now, that's not to say your finished product is going to have to be gray, but you do want to make sure that you use something with a gray undertone. Also, we want to kind of neutralize this gray grout in between the bricks. Now, it's not the quickest process in the world because we really want to take our time and get a natural look to it. So it's not something you just slap some paint over there and it's done. It's one of those things that it's kind of a work in progress until you get it where you want it to be. So um, that's what you're going to do is you're going to, I'm going to go over with you how I do it. You need several different colors of paint. Tonight I'm using sandbar because it has a little bit of a gray undertone. Um, but now I cut my sandbar with a little bit of Dixie Bell's French linen. I am using a little bit of Dixie Bell's uh, sawmill gravy, and I'm also using some driftwood. And then I'm gonna use my accent colors are gonna be a little bit of pine cone and a little bit of coffee bean. If you follow me, you know I put coffee bean on nearly everything. Now, those of you who are commenting, I'm sorry, um, I'm gonna be painting, but I will tonight when I finish up, which it'll be late, I'll go back and I'll answer all of your questions and chat with everybody. All right, so first of all, one of the most important things is you need a good brush to do your grout with. This is my favorite little brush. I get these, I think I get them from Amazon. Um, I picked them up at Walmart. Every once in a while they'll have them. Usually they're in like a, a pack of a bunch of brushes. But keep in mind, bricks are rough on your brushes. Don't use your favorite brushes on bricks. I'm just going to tell you, I use older brushes. Now, that's not to say I don't use Dixie Bell brushes, but I use lots of different brushes because the one on the grout, this br after this, this brush will be ruined. This brush will be thrown away after this because grout is very rough. Also, before you get started, I've already vacuumed all of my bricks off and, well, I don't see it here. Let's put it in here. I've already cleaned my bricks. I like to use this to clean my bricks with. It's just a nice wire brush. I wanna say I may have even picked this one up at the Dollar Tree, but you wanna get all, um, sometimes your bricks will uh, leach stuff from the ground 
If your house is sitting on the ground, it'll have water on it. And what you wanna do is remove all of that from your bricks. So make sure and brush your bricks really good and vacuum them off or dust them off before you get started. That's how I clean my bricks and my grout and everything up. And then we're ready. All right. So I'm going to work down here off a ladder since I'm gonna be working with you guys. And when you're working on a ladder, it's a lot more of up and down because you can't have everything on the top of the ladder with you. So it is a lot of up and down. So you need to start with your base coat first. Typically what I like to do is I like to monkey with my grout first, but I take my water bottle and I dampen where I'm gonna work. So we're gonna start right here kind of in the middle. And because bricks are porous, I like to go ahead and get them wet. Now I've still got, I'm working on another fireplace in the other room. So I've still got a little bit of my uh, grout paint in there. And I like to go ahead and get started on my grout first, okay? And everybody does it differently, but I also keep baby wipes because while I'm doing my grout, I don't want too much on my bricks. All I'm trying to do is start the neutralization of the grout. And what I'm using is sandbar cut with a little bit of French linen just to lighten up this gray so that the gray is not so gray. And I don't mind if a little bit of the paint stays on my brick because I'm going to be color washing it anyway. But I like to do that and I just take my baby wipe and wipe it off. And once your baby wipe gets saturated, you can just throw it away. I drop them on my, my drop cloth. And see, so once I get over to where my area is not wet anymore, then we'll have to mist again. And I'm just about to that point. So now you can see when I am doing my grout lines, how much paint gets on there. And like I say, I just like to wipe it back a little bit because I don't want those heavy lines on there. When I get ready to color wash it, we'll, we'll do that. All right, we'll put a little bit more, get it down here. Because when you get ready to color wash your bricks, you can do several at a time. All right, so now we've got our bricks all kind of yucky and messy and you think, holy cow, but we don't mind that there's a little bit of paint on the bricks and everything. You can see the area that we're working in, the grout is much, much lighter. I'm gonna hit this one area right up here because I can see that it's still wet. And that way I don't have to wet it again later. All right. Now, like I say, when you're working this, make sure you don't leave those lines on your brick. If you do, get a little uh, of the rag pads from Surf Prep I use a lot of times, but you just want a little piece of sandpaper and you get those little lines of paint right off. All right, now one of the ones that I like to use is, I think it's a zebra brush. It is kind of a weird shape, but it works great on brick. So if you haven't tried it, um, you want to do that. Now the color that I'm going to use a little bit here is my French linen sandbar mix. Okay, so now what I'm doing is some of these are going to be lighter than others, but we're going to go back and we're going to wipe some of them back. And when I wipe them back, I like to use blue shock towels because they don't leave any lint on there. And if you leave lint on these things, it just stays and stays. It looks awful. All right. So now when you get ready to wipe it back, don't just wipe. Kind of blot it back. Because what you're wanting is an uneven finish. And see, I like mine to be blotted back. And I'm going to go back in and dry brush these bricks a little bit with some different colors. Because what I'm trying to do right now is just neutralize these the red because the homeowner is tired of the red Ooh, too much paint too much paint so now this one i just put too much paint on there can you see how much paint there is so what i'll do is i'll take and i'll use my mister bottle and i'll redistribute the paint i'll put it on the brick below it and everything like that but then while it's still wet i'm going to take and block this a little bit I just want to get the heaviness off of that brick. And now you can see 
how we've started right there. It's lightening up in that area because that's what we're wanting to do. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, it seems like a lot of trouble, but you don't want your brick to look painted. So hang on, we're gonna let these dry a little bit. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a chip brush and you're gonna add a little bit of color to these. All right, they've got pretty much the dry on here. And if you follow me, you know, well, let me grab my other chip brush. Sorry about that, guys. If you follow me, you know I love to use coffee bean. And this is, when you look at older bricks and everything, it helps if you have a little bit of a texture in there. So we're going to add a little bit here. And we're going to go back to our cloth because we don't want it to look rubbed on there. We want it to just have a little bit of a multi-tonal effect. So we're going to soften it up a little bit using our coffee bean. And I like to catch it on the edges so it has a little bit of darkness to it. And we're not going to just use that color. The other color that I have is a little bit of French linen. And we're going to add that on there. And I have some burlap as well. So we're going to add that on and you're going to kind of just spot it on there. And go back in with your coffee bean. Because like I say, the goal is not for it to be white. We don't want white. We just want it color washed slightly. And if you just barely like a butterfly kiss, rub your, your chip brush. And you can see this one, I've cut it way back. You can do that so that it just catches on the high points of your brick and then take your cloth and rub back and forth across it. And before you know it, you're gonna have a much lighter color of your brick versus this dark red and it's gonna be softer. If it doesn't do it with the first coat, you can always go back in. But like I say, when you're dealing with red brick, you're much better, excuse me, you're much better off to have a gray undertone because it helps to neutralize the red. And once this is, whole thing is done, it's hard to see just these few little bricks here to see how it's gonna look. But once the entire thing is done, it'll give the room a much more neutral look than having this big, huge red brick thing. Plus, we are gonna add a mantle to this tomorrow. So once we get the bricks done, then we're gonna go back in and add a mantle and it will completely change the, the look of the room. And of course, the mantle will be painted with Dixie Belle and I've already got it sanded down in the warehouse so that it is ready to be painted. I will put the first coat of paint on before we install it, and then I'll put the next coat. But I wanted to show you, when you get ready to redo bricks, you can get rid of this red and make it much, much more neutral. And you can add as much or as little as you want. You can add, burlap is a great color to use. French linen is a good color to use. There's so many pretty Dixie Belle colors. Sandbar is a good color to use. Sawmill gravy. Uh, pine cone, chocolate, all of those look very natural and that way you have a very organic feel when everything's said and done. And once this is completed, I'll put up some finished pictures and you guys can see kind of where I'm going with it. But I did want to show you guys when you get ready to do it, the best thing to do is to start with your grout and move from your grout to your bricks. Make sure everything's taped and draped and everything so that you can... Um, so that you don't get drips everywhere. Now we are going to be doing the hearth on both of these fireplaces, but right now you want to make sure your hearth is covered up because if while you're doing this you get any paint drips, they'll dry and they will affect the way you'll have to sand them back before you can get to your hearth. So make sure when you're working above your hearth and your floors that everything is taped and draped and you're ready so that when you, as you, and it's best if you'll start at the top and work down that's why I'm only doing this little spot because as you can see, the top is about two stories up and um, I've got to get up there and start at the top and come down. And I don't want to do too much more than this right here in the lower area. 
We're also going to do a little bit of something with the fireplace surrounds and the mantel in the other room, but I will have pictures up for you guys to see. But I did want to tell you, when you get ready to do something like this, you can start at 8 o'clock at night, but you may be up till 2 a.m., but it can be a weekend project, and it's very easy. And I will tell you, in most cases, I do not top coat my bricks, especially if they're vertical, because Dixie Bill doesn't require a top coat, and the bricks look so much more natural without a top coat. If you are going to top coat it, um, usually if there's a horizontal hearth, I will top coat it, but I'll use a flat top coat. Even if I use gator hide for the water repellency, I will use a flat top coat so that it ends up having a more natural feel to it. So if you guys have questions, please let me know. I will get on here and answer them later tonight. But as you can see, I'm gonna be busy for a few hours um, getting some of this done, and I want you to see what it looks like when I finish. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. And if you don't follow me at 44 Marketplace, I would appreciate it. And y'all all have a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next week. Bye!